Hello! Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. This is episode two. Good to see you again today. My name is Joy, and I've started to host this podcast during the coronavirus COVID-19 lockdown of the United States. Times are crazy right now. Everyone is hibernating. And one thing that we knitters have that we can do is knit helps keep us safe, comfortable. It's like Noah's Ark, something that holds us afloat during troubled times. All right, so today I'll start with what I'm wearing. I have another sweater today. This sweater was a kit from Knit Picks. I got it back in 2011 and finished it in 2012. So it's a little bit old, a few years old. It was called the Norwegian Luskoft Kit. Luskoft. I'm not sure how to say that, but that was the name of the kit. It was by Karen Dimmler Lawrence. And let's see, it uses the Knit Picks yarn called Telemark, which has been since discontinued, which is too bad because I really like this yarn. It's a sport weight, 100% wool. Uh, so the original pattern had a placket down the front, and I didn't like that, so I took it out and just did it like a plane here at the top. Also, it did have different cuffs on the arms. I did originally knit the cuffs from the pattern, but the sleeves turned out too long and then the cuffs were kind of big around my wrist and I didn't like the way that it felt to wear it. And I left it like that for a season or two and I found myself never wearing the sweater. So I decided to bite the bullet and I cut above the cuff and took the whole cuff off and then re-knit it. So it has a slightly di it has a different pattern here right at the bracelet. And then I just did knit two purl two rib at the bottom instead of having the folded over hem. And this cuff I really like. This is I have learned <laughs> the things that I like and one of them is to have a nice close fitting cuff at the wrist. So now I wear the sweater. Well, not all the time because it's very warm. Even though it's sport white yarn, it's toasty. So I usually save this for very cold days. Uh, one other thing is that I have, it happened in this sweater and I've learned since also is that my row gauge, like many knitters, if I can get stitch gauge, I often cannot get row gauge. And my row gauge is usually bigger or longer than what the pattern calls for. So the top part of the sweater ended up being longer than it should have been. So it's kind of long, but it's, it's a big boxy fit, so I guess you don't really notice it and it doesn't bother me too much, but it is longer than it should have been. I love the design of the mountains right here. And in fact, until I had finished that part, I didn't even realize that's what it was, <laughs> but I think it's really cool. Now this was my first and only, so far, project that I steaked. The armholes were steaked and the neck was steaked and the two sleeves were knit separately up to the stranded portion and then the two sleeves were knit together in the round and then you steaked to cut the sleeves apart. It was really interesting construction. Fun to do. So it was quite an adventure. <laughs> My sweater. All right. Um, next, I mentioned last time that I am a master knitter and I took the master knitting class in order to learn how to knit basically. So I wanted to show you level one. 
which is where I started. It's a correspondence course. So they mail you the materials and then you work it and you send your stuff back and they evaluate it. So this, it says received March 2001. So I started knitting in 2000. So about a year later is when I started the master class. And it's pages and pages and pages of things to do. Oh, plus they give you a bibliography at the end to find the answers to the questions that you need. Like I said, this was before, this is 2001, so it's before the internet was widely used and before there were a lot of things available online. And consequently, I spent a lot of time at the library. So they have you make a whole bunch of swatches and you learn and practice how to do things and then they ask you questions, ask you things and they always have some kind of sort of essay to do. So for example, this is level one, right? It's beginner. So I got garter stitch and two by two ribbing. I had to tag it say what it was, what swatch it was, what my name is. So every swatch has a tag saying what it is and then the swatch itself. So in my book I have garter stitch, stockinette stitch, seed stitch, and then we do increases. So there's a bar, the bar increase or the knit one front back increase. Make one increase, lifted increase, knit, and then we do decreases. Knit two together, SSK or SSP. That was SSP, this is SSK. Uh, increases, so here, uh, here are eyelets. So there's two swatches in here. I sent everything once. And then they evaluated it and they sent it back to me and they gave, critiqued everything that I had done. So everything that was wrong or not done according to the way they would do it, you had a redo. So one is my first swatch and one is my second swatch. Now you probably can't tell the difference and actually I can't either. I would have to go back and read the notes and what was wrong with it. They're very exacting and they have high standards. So this is, um, so that was a yarn over increase, so you can see the swatch is getting bigger. And then the next one is yarn over knit two together so that your stitch count stays the same, but with the increases. And then yarn, yarn over SSK. Now we did basic cables. Here's another one where I had to do the swatch twice. There was something wrong with it. And on this one, I had to write up out a pattern for how I made the swatch. So this was like introduction to pattern writing. <clears throat> then here is adding stripes. And then finally, uh, an essay on how to block knits. So not only did I have to fig figure out how to do it, and then I had to write it and explain it so that somebody else could understand it. So that was my level one class. I submitted it once, they critiqued it. I ch made the changes that were suggested and resubmitted it, and then the second time I passed. And then this is the certificate that you get when you pass the class. So level one, I mean, if you've been knitting any, any time, basically, that would be very easy for any proficient knitter to do. Even any beginner, because it's your basic stitches and increases and decreases and how to block the bare necessities, the basics. So, and then level two goes on from there. All right. Um, now, I did something last week that I almost never do. I saw a sale for yarn to buy online, and I did it. I usually only buy like yarn in person, 
because I like to touch it, see it, see what the colors are. However, a friend of mine, I'm pretty sure, has used this yarn before and I've seen it knit up and I already knew that I liked it and I already knew that I had been wanting some and now it was on sale so I'm like, oh, I jumped in and did it. So here, we're going to open this box. It is from Mason Dixon Knitting. Let's see what's in here. Well, I already know what's in here, but still it's kind of exciting. <laughs> okay. So here it says, thank you. Here's my receipt. And what is this? They look like postcards. They're pictures from... Mason Dixon Field Guide Number 13 Masterclass. They're both patterns from the Masterclass. So this is the K Facet one. I actually have this book. I bought it. And here's what's inside. Unique Sock. I've been wanting self-striping sock yarn for I can't tell you how long. And I guess because of the way it's made, it's it's pretty expensive. Even more expensive than your normal hand eyes. So when this went on sale, I couldn't help myself. So here it is. So it's like a dark blue sort of an olive color, like a rusty brown, and a, like a beige. So it'll stripe up. And they have it separated into two identical balls so that each sock will match each other. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> so that'll be fun. I probably won't get to these for a while because I have other slots I want to make before that, but it's something to look forward to. Okay. And I've been continuing with the, what am I working on? I've been conti continuing with the Arna and Carlos Mystery Quarantine Knit Along. So I'll show you my blocks for this week. Here we have Hippie Flower. It's a fun one. This is Clematis. This one is Crooked Rose. That's pretty. I really like that one. This one is Golden Pothos. And this one, since we're all in isolation and you can't hug me now, then hug me later. Love it. This week we discovered that the, the original intent was it was going to be a pillow. They were saying it was going to be nine squares for the front. So it would be like three by three. And then the tenth square was going to be one giant square for the back. Now they say it still may be a pillow, but they're thinking maybe not. I don't know. So uh, originally it was just supposed to be these two weeks, and now they've extended it, so it's going to be another two another two weeks. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up with it. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, but I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned. That's it for this episode of Quail's Knitting Nest. Knit on. Let me know. Have you been working on the Arn and Carlos Mystery Knit Along also? Tell me in the comments. Have a good day.